Welcome to Super Great Kids Stories. Fun tales to make you laugh and cry with some of the best storytellers from around the world. Recommended for ages 5 to 105. I'm Kim and I love stories. Red and yellow and pink and green Orange and purple and blue I can sing a rainbow Sing a rainbow Sing a rainbow too. Oh, hello. How are you? Guess what this week's story's about. That's right, rainbows. Scientists tell us that a rainbow is a combination of sunshine and raindrops. But the Shoshone people from the United States have their own story about rainbows, which involves some very hot people and a magical creature who can help cool them down. But will the people listen? Well, you can find out from our storyteller, Pamela Ma, in just a minute. But first, I'm going to tell you about a couple of happies from some of you which dropped into our mailbox to brighten our week. Thanks to RN from Nashville in Tennessee. RN, who is five, likes to listen to super great kids' stories when he's on his way to swimming class. Swimming is such a good thing to be able to do, RN. Lucky you having lessons. Thanks to you and your grown-ups for their kind donation on Kofi. If anyone listening would like to help out towards paying our storytellers, then visit kofi.com forward slash super great kids stories. And thanks very much to Abby in Virginia for a kind review on Apple Podcasts. Abby's favourite story is Tiddlink the Thirsty Frog. Good choice, Abby. Tiddlink is not very good at sharing, is he? So, all you super great kids followers, let me know which is your favourite story. You can message on Facebook Messenger. Our Facebook page is facebook.com forward slash super great kids stories. We really love hearing from you. Now, it's time for this week's story. And over to storyteller Pamela Ma, who's going to tell us a how and why story from the Shoshone people in the United States. Are you ready? Here it comes. Mouth open. Story jump out. It was hot, hot, hot. The sun blazed down out of the sky that was always blue. Fine wisps of clouds travelled across the sky, but they came and went and never released any water, and the earth stayed dry, dry, dry and cracked. It was baked hard. The people looked for shade, but there wasn't any, because the trees and bushes had lost their leaves they had shriveled and turned brown in the heat and the dry air. The people tried to pile up rocks and tree branches to make small puddles of shadow, but it was too hard to work in that heat. The birds and animals that could travel had fled to the cool of the mountains. The rivers shrank to streams. The streams shrank to trickles and the trickles dried up and disappeared. The few frogs and fish that were left burrowed into the mud on the bottoms of what had once been lakes. The world seemed empty. Without water to drink, we will die, the people said to their chief. What can we do to bring rain? What can we do, the chief asked the medicine man, the healer, the wise man of the tribe. But the medicine man shook his head. I've done all that I can do, he said. I have performed all of the dances that should bring rain. I have sung all of the songs that should bring rain. And I have chanted all of the prayers that should bring rain. But the eyes and the ears of the spirits are closed only those small animals with homes that lie deep under the ground can escape this burning heat. 
In one of those homes, deep in the ground, beneath the medicine man's feet, a brightly coloured, stripy snake was curled up in the cool, dark safety of his little home. He had heard the thud, thud, thud of the medicine man's feet when he danced. He had heard the songs of the medicine man as he sang, and he had heard the words of the prayers that the medicine man had chanted. Now he could hear the sounds of people crying for water, and the cries echoed down the long tunnel to his nest. Then he heard those last words of the medicine man. I will help them, said the snake, and he crawled along the tunnel to its opening. He tasted the air with his sharp tongue. <laughs> it was hot, it was dusty, and it was dry, dry, dry. I can bring rain, called the snake to the medicine man and the chief. How can you do that, said the medicine man. Listen, said the snake. High in the sky, invisible to you, there are clouds, finer than the finest mist. Some you can see, and some are invisible to you, but I can see them, and inside those clouds there is ice. If you fling me up there, I will cling to the clouds with my scaly skin and scrape some of the ice loose. The ice will fall, and as it draws near to the hot earth, it will melt and become rain. Tss. That sounds good, said the chief, but the medicine man was not convinced. You are so small, he said to the snake. How can you scrape enough ice to bring rain? I am a powerful magician, yet all of my magic has failed. S you don't understand my magic, said the snake. But you must have faith in me. I will stretch from my small size to such a great length that I will cover the sky from north to south. Throw me as high as you can and you'll see. The medicine man was unwilling, but the chief and all the people begged him to try, and so at last he picked up the little snake by the tail and threw him with all his might into the sky. Whoa, 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 whoa. The snake flew, twisting and turning, up to clouds that were so high the people below couldn't even see them, and when he reached them, he stretched across the sky, and his scales stood away from his body and hooked themselves onto the clouds until he had become an arch over the earth from south to north, touching the earth with his head and his tail while his body curved up high into the sky. And then the snake began to tremble, began to quiver, began to shake, to shiver, to shimmying, faster and faster and faster and faster, so that the colours in his stretched stripes blurred and glowed red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and his scales scraped and sanded and shaved the ice from the clouds so that the crystals fell like snow. Falling towards the ground, the ice crystals were melted by the heat of the sun, and as they reached the people, they melted into rain. The snake kept moving, and his body arched across the sky, glowed with all the colours of the world, and the people opened their mouths and drank the rain as it fell. The plants drank, the trees drank, the dry stream beds flowed with water, the snake shivered and shimmered in the sky, and the rain went on and on. In the dried mud, 
the frogs and fish came back to life. The lakes filled with water and the birds and animals travelled back to their familiar desert homes. The world came back to life. And when the thirst of the people and all living things was quenched and everything that lives on earth was satisfied, the snake relaxed and rested. The rain stopped, but the snake stayed in his new home, always watchful and always ready to help again. And to this day, when the sun shines too hot, the Shoshone people dance and call to the rainbow snake in the sky to help them. And if you look up as the rain falls under the sun, you will see him arched across the sky and glowing with all the colours in the world as he makes rain. Oh, what a lovely story. Thanks so much to Pamela for that. Do send us a picture of the rainbow snake making rain. If you'd like to send us a picture of any of our stories, post it on our Facebook page at facebook.com forward slash stories. We love getting them and thank you all for listening. A special hello to our followers in Portland, Oregon and in Toronto in Canada. That's it. Until next week. <laughs>